In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to St Mary's this morning, both here in church and online. Today, the church commemorates William Law, priest and spiritual writer of the 18th century. Born at King's Cliff in Northamptonshire in 1686, William Law was educated at Emmanuel College, Cambridge, and after ordination as a deacon, became a fellow of the college in 1711. When George I came to the throne in 1714, William declined to take the oath of allegiance, being a member of the non-juror party, who believed the anointed but deposed monarch James II and his heirs should occupy the throne. He lost his fellowship, but in 1728 he was made a priest, and in the same year published a serious call to a devout and holy life, which much influenced such people as Samuel Johnson and John and Charles Wesley. In it he stresses the moral virtues, a personal prayer life and asceticism. He returned to King's Cliff in 1740 where he led a life of devotion, simplicity and caring for the poor. He remained there the rest of his life and died on this day in the year 1761. So in this Easter season, as we celebrate the joy of the resurrection, we ask too for a renewal of our own prayer life and devotion as we draw close to God. Let us begin our worship this morning by singing together, Sing to God New Songs of Worship. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts, that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. First reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. Then the high priest took action, he and all who were with him, that is, the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out, and said, Go, stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. When the high priest and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body out of the elders of Israel and sent to prison to have them brought. But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words. They were perplexed about them, wondering what might be going on. Then someone arrived and announced, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went to the temple police and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. This is the word of the Lord. According to John. Lord, Glory to you, you O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, 
God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, and those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Easter season uh, is that we continue to hear from the Acts of the Apostles uh, during our services um, every Sunday and a lot of the weekdays as well. Uh, and there's a small instruction in the, in the book which says um, it doesn't matter whether you have an Old or a New Testament alongside Acts, but you must hear from the Acts of the Apostles on a Sunday in Easter time. And the reason for that is that the Acts of the Apostles relates what happens to this uh, first group of Christians, first group of followers of Jesus after the resurrection, as they built the church based on what Jesus had taught and instructed them. And we hear that today. In fact, today's reading seems to have a few echoes of the resurrection story. We've got the guards suddenly realising that the people they are guarding are not inside anymore. Now in this case it was prison uh, rather than a tomb, but we hear that echo of the soldiers at the tomb. And in the same way you have the teaching element that after the resurrection Peter was there teaching the crowds in Jerusalem. <coughs> And that's exactly where they find him. Just as after Jesus had risen from the dead, he began meeting with the disciples to teach with them, to eat with them, to share with them. And you've got the locked room of John. And in today's reading again, you have Peter passing through the locked door, as it were, just as Jesus appeared within the locked upper room on that first day. And it's those echoes of the resurrection which I think should mark out our community as Christians. Now, I'm not suggesting that we can move through locked doors or appear in places where we weren't expected to be. But there is certainly an element of believing in the transformation of life that God invites us into. I notice that this passage begins with uh, an instruction that those who are with the apostles, who put them in the public prison in the first place, was the sect of the Sadducees. Now, elsewhere in the Gospels, uh, Luke is keen to point out that it's the Sadducees who do not believe in the resurrection. It's the Sadducees who came to Jesus and tried to catch him out with that question about 
uh, marriage, and uh, if there was uh, a woman who had been married to each of the, the seven brothers, which one would she be married to in heaven? Trying to catch him out about the rules around resurrection uh, and what that would mean for our heavenly life. And so I think it's particularly appropriate that it's in the presence of the Sadducees, who do not believe in the resurrection, that these echoes of the resurrection happen. And you can imagine what they're thinking. Uh, they've got in mind that uh, Jesus rose from the dead, and, and because they're Sadducees, they probably don't believe the stories about him. And then it happens again, or it doesn't quite happen again because the apostles haven't died. This isn't a resurrection. But as I said, echoes of the resurrection. I think this is sort of confirming it in front of the Sadducees that no, this really did happen. Jesus does have the power to be raised from the dead. God has that power to transform our lives. And so if a couple of weeks old, we need that reminder of the joy of the resurrection and the power of Christ to transform our lives. It's here in this reading today. Because Jesus knows we need those constant reminders. That's why we continue this Easter season and keep it going right through to Ascension and Pentecost. That's why it takes those 50 days of Easter time with the Paschal candle lit in our presence, a reminder of that risen life. Because we know we need that reminder. And it's only after the 50 days that we're given the Holy Spirit and sent out into the world, and our liturgy mirrors that. So as we come together today, let us remember that transformative power to see the world in a new light. And we know we need that today. When it can seem that there's little hope with war in Ukraine and Gaza, with poverty and illness all around us, we know that it can be difficult to hold on to that hope. But we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God in this world or the next. And we give thanks for that and hold on to our hope in that. So let us stand to affirm our faith in Christ in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. <coughs> Lord 
God, we thank you for the new life which transforms this worshipping community, the church. We thank you for the new life of baptism, and we pray for those recently baptised and those preparing to be baptised. May your new life transform their lives to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our own lives and the lives of those with whom we share this earthly life, our family, our friends, our neighbours. Help us to know the love which teaches us to love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world at this time and particularly for those places of conflict in Ukraine, for Gaza, and for all those caught up in war and terror. <coughs> we pray at this time across the world for those who would wish to commit acts of terror and intimidation. Praying that our hearts may be turned to peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community in Haverhill and the surrounding area, and for those communities of which we are a part. We pray for all those community activities which we have planned, particularly over the summer. Help us to know the fellowship and neighbourliness which helps to build us up as a community and society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who we know to be in need of our prayer at this time, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are ill in body, mind or spirit, for those in poverty, for those lonely and isolated. Lord, strengthen us by your healing spirit, that we may know your presence here among us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear yeah, our prayer. And we pray in this season of rejoicing in the resurrection for those who have passed on through the gates of death to your heavenly life. Among some we pray in particular for Sylvia Webb and for Clive Rogers, for whom we hold a memorial service tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for each one of us, for our vocation and ministry, that you may call us to echo the power of the resurrection through our own lives, service and ministry. Help us to proclaim the gospel in word and deed, and to be renewed through our worship and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these and all our prayers together with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the apostles and saints, as we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray for the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Peace to those who are with us online this morning, we share your peace today as well. As the altar is prepared, let us sing together our offertory hymn, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Bay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And now we give you thanks that you raised up your servant William Law to be an example of prayerful life, devotion, and worship. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the blessed Virgin Mary, William, Law, and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. In temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us stand to sing this morning's final hymn, Name of All Majesty. perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.